This car here is to round a 15 meter radius of curvature sharp curve on level road. The road is wet and the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road is 0.6. Find the maximum speed of the car to make this turn safely without skidding. It may seem weird that I'm giving you the coefficient of static friction, not the kinetic one, even though the car is obviously moving. But if the car is not skidding, there is no sliding motion between the road and the tires. Tires rotate like this without sliding on the road. That is why the friction is static friction. Another thing about this problem is that the mass of the car is not given to you. If a problem does not give you the mass, usually it means that the mass does not matter. So you can just use M for the mass of the car. And hopefully, M will cancel and therefore will not affect your answer. Of course, that also means if you let the car be, say, a thousand kilograms, you should be able to get the same answer too. Since we have to be able to deal with problems with no numbers, it's a good idea for you to just say the mass is M and use M in your work. Now see if you can find that maximum speed. Let's follow the problem solving procedures. The car is making a circular turn to the right. Since it is doing circular motion, its acceleration is uh, towards the center. And for this car making the circular turn, the center is uh, to the right. So the acceleration goes to the right. That's the centripetal acceleration towards the center. And let's draw this force diagram. For the car, with a horizontal acceleration, of course, you don't really need the vertical forces. But in this case, we'll just draw all the forces. You have the non-contact force, mg. We don't know the m, so we just leave this m, and uh, it's contacting the road, contact surface. So we have a normal force going upward, and uh, we have a friction. In this case, the friction can be tricky. The car is going forward that way, but friction does not go backwards. Because, uh, let's see, if you are in a turning car, your body would lean outward. That means the car also has a tendency to lean outward. So the car has a tendency to slide outward. And this static friction, which is against the tendency to slide outward, this friction will go inward. See, the acceleration is horizontal. Only a horizontal force can contribute to this uh, horizontal acceleration. So the friction has to be the one to provide the acceleration. So friction has to be in the same direction as the acceleration because the two other forces, mg and normal force, they are vertical. They have nothing to do with this uh, horizontal acceleration. So here you have the friction. The car is not touching anything else. We're done with the force diagram. So let's write the net force equals to ma. Now because we need the friction, we'll need the normal force so, of course, in this case, the normal force and mg, they cancel. So, but if we write a force equation in the y direction, there is no y component of the acceleration. So, in the y direction, the acceleration is zero. That means the upward force equals to the downward force. And then, let's see the x direction. Friction is uh, the net force in the x direction. That equals to ma. And the, the acceleration in the x direction is that centripetal acceleration. So this is the v squared over r. Okay, now if the car is moving at the maximum speed, 
that means、uh, we are using the maximum friction. So if this is the maximum speed, that will be the maximum possible friction. So this will be mu s times the normal force. And、uh, of course, we found earlier our normal force is m g. So this equals to that. I'm just going to copy it down right here. The mass, see, cancels. So the mass of the car does not matter. So here we can solve for the speed. Let's see, mu s is 0.6. G. I'm going to use 10, and then v squared over the radius 15. So this gives us the speed. The maximum speed is 9.5 meters per second. As you can see over here, if the road is dry, the mu s would be bigger. If the mu s is bigger, that means you have you can have faster speed to make that turn safely. But if the road is icy, the mu s will be much smaller. Smaller the mu s, the smaller the v. That means you have to reduce the speed, really reduce the speed to make a turn. What do you think would happen if the car goes faster than 9.5 meters per second and begins to skid? The moment the car starts to skid, the friction becomes the kinetic friction. And the kinetic friction is usually less than the maximum static friction. Less friction means less force to keep the car in circular motion. So the car could go off the road and may result in an accident. This is also true for a car speeding up or slowing down along a straight level road. If the car is traveling to the right and speeds up. The acceleration would go to the right. If the car is traveling to the right and slowing down, the acceleration would go to the left. If you draw the force diagram, it'll be just like that car. You would have m g and the normal force. M g and the normal force, and both of those will have friction. Which way do you think friction goes in each of these situations? When the car accelerates forward, the friction has to go forward because the friction is the only horizontal force to provide this forward horizontal acceleration. Similarly, the friction for this car has to go back that way to provide the, this acceleration. Either way, the force equation will be the same as、uh, this right here. So, if we write the force equation for these two cars, we would have net force equals to m a for the Horizontal direction. I mean, for the y direction, it's the same as that. F n equals to m g because there's no acceleration in the y direction. For the x direction, it's also friction is the net force because friction is the only force in the horizontal direction, and that equals to m a. But these two, they do not have. Circular motion, so the acceleration is not centripetal acceleration. It's not v squared over r. It's just this、uh, acceleration. That means that we can use this to find the maximum acceleration the cars can have. If it's maximum acceleration, that means the friction is the maximum static friction. So this would be mu s times the normal force, which is m g. And this equals to m a. The mass cancels. That means、uh, the maximum acceleration equals to mu s times g. Mu s is point six g. If I use ten, 
I will get the maximum acceleration is 6 meters per second squared. That means uh, if the car is speeding up, the maximum acceleration will be 6 meters per second squared. For this car, the maximum acceleration will be negative 6, or 6 going back that way. If you step on the gas pedal too hard, try to accelerate the car at a rate that's more than 6 meters per second squared, the car would skid. If we step on the brake pedal too hard, trying to get more than 6 meters per second squared of deceleration, the car would also skid. When the car skids, we have the lower kinetic friction and therefore reduce the traction. That's why we have anti-lock brakes to help tires grip the road when skidding happens. When your anti-lock brake system detects skidding, it pumps your brakes rapidly sometimes as much as 15 times a second, which means it lets the wheels go so they can grip the road, so we can have the higher static friction to use. Then it pushes down the brakes again, then let it go and repeat until skidding stops. When a car accelerates, the tires have to rotate faster, so it has a tendency to slide back that way, so the static friction against the tendency to slide will go forward to provide the forward acceleration. When a car travels at a constant velocity, it does not have a tendency to slide. Because of inertia, it just has a tendency to keep going at a constant velocity. So there is no friction and that is just fine because there is no acceleration either. When a car slows down, the tires have to rotate more slowly. Because of its inertia, it has a tendency to keep going at that original faster speed. So the tires have a tendency to slide forward. Therefore, friction goes backwards, providing the backward acceleration. So basically, if a car is on level road, whether it is speeding up, slowing down, or making a turn, it relies on friction, the only horizontal force on the car, to provide the horizontal acceleration. Because both gravity and g and the normal force are vertical and therefore cannot contribute to the horizontal acceleration. And since kinetic friction between the tires and the road is less than the maximum static friction, a car's traction would decrease the moment it begins to skid. So skidding can be very dangerous. Now let's go back to the original problem. Some very similar problems we sometimes see are a basket on a spinning merry-go-round or maybe a penny on a turntable. They have exactly the same force diagram as the turning car because the penny on a turntable has a tendency to slide outward, so the friction will go inward. And then of course it has mg and the normal force. So exactly the same force diagram. When the turntable spins faster and faster, eventually the penny will begin to slide on it. Because as the V increases, the friction also increases until it reaches the maximum static friction. After that, friction is not enough to keep it in circular motion with the turntable and the penny slides. So the moment before the penny begins to slide, the friction is a maximum. So everything is just like the turning car.